Good evening. Who would be a pensioner in 2024, watching a country that they love and helped build quietly unravel? Disorder on the streets, antisocial behaviour and a health service on its knees at exactly the moment when someone later in life needs it. Meanwhile, the glories of our past with victories in two world wars, the ending of slavery and the exporting to the world of parliamentary democracy and free markets have been replaced with a narrative that a country to which our pensioners have spent their life contributing, including their taxes, is in fact a wicked post-colonial superpower with a shameful history for which we must atone on a daily basis. Even a trip to the gift shop or cafe of a National Trust property won't spare you the tired message that Britain is a belligerent, intolerant hellhole with an evil past. Now, Britain has always been diverse and immigration has helped make this country what it is. But current rates of legal migration are seeing cities the size of Leeds or Liverpool grow within a year when previously it took a hundred. Which means that the Britain that our pensioners know and love is changing beyond recognition at a rate which places undue strain on public services, housing, the economy and our infrastructure, not to mention the delicate alchemy of integration. Our pensioners are watching Britain turn from a successful, diverse society into a failing multicultural experiment. The parents and grandparents of today's pensioners fought with their lives to protect our national boundaries during the Second World War, only for their children and grandchildren to watch our national boundaries breached on a daily basis in the channel in what has become an economic, humanitarian and national security disaster. Meanwhile, every weekend during the so-called peace marches following October the 7th, ideological thugs hold banners calling for a holy war and chant anti-Semitic slogans unpunished. At one point, the Cenotaph, which is there to remember our war dead, who gave their lives for freedom and democracy, became a backdrop for extremists seeking the wiping out of Israel, the only democracy in the Middle East. Who would be a pensioner in 2024, having been needlessly locked in their homes during the wild experiment of lockdowns during the pandemic and left to rot in care homes? Britain's elderly were among the worst hit by the cost of living crisis and are now the target of Labour's swinging cuts as they plug the £9 billion cost of pay rises for train drivers and junior doctors. And how are they going to do that? by allowing 10 million pensioners, two thirds of whom are living in poverty, to shiver in their homes this winter. Now, stopping the boats would save three billion pounds a year. That's double what the government is saving on the fuel allowance cut. But Labour, of course, have ditched Rwanda and with it, the only deterrent we had. And whilst illegal immigrants should absolutely be accommodated as well and as safely as any other Brit, how ironic that the radiators in migrant hotels will stay on this winter as British pensioners sit at home with three coats on, wearing mittens, deliberating whether they can afford to put the kettle on, let alone the heater. Even Labour's uh, own MPs are up in arms about the cut to the winter fuel allowance. Rachel Maskell, the MP for York Central, warned of the public health impact of the cuts. She said, we know that being cold leads to stroke, heart attacks, pneumonia, hypothermia and so much more as the body wrestles to keep warm and viruses prey on the frail. Last winter, she says, 4,950 people died because their homes were cold. The fear is that if we withdraw winter fuel payments for those in fuel poverty, it will lead to excess deaths. Meanwhile, Ed Miliband's net zero plans were going to shave £300 off people's energy bills, except that they've now stopped quoting that figure. Can't imagine why. And energy is going to go up 10% this winter. And £300 is the exact amount that they're taking off 10 million pensioners. Make it make sense. And things could get even worse for pensioners, with Angela Rayner considering hammering up to four million pensioners by removing their council tax break for single occupancy. 
Now, before the election, I predicted on this show that we would have five years of civil war within the governing Labour Party. Well, several MPs have already been suspended for voting against the two-child benefit cap, with more Labour's, Labour MPs set to abstain this week on the winter fuel allowance vote. Even Labour loyalist and Keir Starmer's biggest cheerleader, LBC host Carol Vorderman, is feeling the heat. Take a listen to this angry caller. I'm incandescent about it. I couldn't have believed that a Labour government would have ever done anything so iniquitous. Carol looks uncomfortable, but it gets worse. There will be more pensioners that die of hypothermia this winter or and or malnutrition because there will be people who are having to make choices between heating and eating. Poor Carol's rendered speechless as the caller finishes her demolition of this new government, for which the former Countdown Queen campaigned. Why clobber pensioners? I think they will pay for this at the next election because will. we will never, ever vote Labour again. And we voted Labour all our lives. We will never really, vote Labour again. Really? That's, that's significant for you and your partner? I just think it's so iniquitous, so unfair. Um, you know... I, just, I really can't believe that a Labour government have done this. They, they turned themselves into the new nasty party, or the even nastier party, because even the Tories didn't do this. This is a national scandal. Pensioners have given everything to this country, and now they're being left out in the cold. Well, for reaction, I'm delighted to be joined in the studio by Annunciata Rees-Mogg, journalist and broadcaster Michael Crick and former Tory MP and farmer Neil Parrish. I should say that uh, Annunciata is part of the popular Conservatives, if that's not a contradiction in terms. Great to see all three of you. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Annunciata, uh, hot-footing it from the west of England, lovely to see you. Uh, first of all, why have Labour picked this fight with pensioners, do you think? Uh, the only reason I can think of is that uh, proportionately the uh, older population are less likely to vote Labour. And it's very clear where Labour are putting their priorities, that they can afford pay rises for unionised groups such as train drivers. And they ha are cutting from those who desperately need help, the elderly uh, uh, and particularly the single elderly. What I didn't mention in my Big Opinion monologue, Neil is that the reason why they're having to make these cuts is because of the right haulics that the last Conservative government made of the economy. I think they have chosen to cut the winter fuel allowance because I think they wanted to decide that let's look after the younger people uh, and let's sort of target pensioners. Um, the trouble we've got with pensioners is that many of them are very proud, uh, that many of them that could actually draw pension credit don't. And so therefore, you know, this is going to really affect them badly. And of course, Whatever the state of the economy is, Mark, um, that we didn't say pay the public sector unions all the money, the train drivers and all of these things. So uh, why, why, why is it? Why is it? Well, why had to settle? Yeah, but there would have been a deal, and it would yeah, cost money. But why is it that pensioners that, that can ill afford and will, will will freeze, putting it bluntly, this winter? Why should they pay for things that Labour are doing? They didn't put that in their manifesto. Also, you see, like I said, the single occupancy. See, there's many pensioners who have got perhaps quite a lot of capital, may live in a quite a, a, a big house, but they've got no money. And, and I okay. think, you know, I just don't think Labour understands what pensioners have to My, go through. Michael, some would say this smacks of strong government, strong leadership and a prime minister in Keir Starmer that won't flip-flop and won't U-turn. Well, he'd certainly like to give that impression. Uh, and it's going to be very difficult for Starmer or Reeves to come up with a significant U-turn because it looked, looked like they, you know, they failed at the first fence uh, and they can't have that. But I, I do think they, they need to find some other ways as, of, of um, lessening the burden of this cut for poorer people. Let's face it, I mean, despite your diatribe at the front there, pensioners are better off probably in this country than they have ever been. A in as much as, Would you uh, say a portion of them? Well, yeah. quite a lot of them. I mean, in that uh, we're living longer. Uh, Neil and I are both pensioners. We're living longer. Uh, we, 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 we have a variety of activities. We, we travel, have foreign travel. Mm -hmm. we can, uh, uh, and many of us are still able to get jobs in, 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 you know, into our 70s, even yeah. 80s at, at times. So it's a very mixed picture here. Mm -hmm. And it's ridiculous that somebody... Uh, 
people like us should be getting winter fuel payments or even free travel on the underground but, when at, 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 at a time yeah, when yeah. poorer people but, but, need them, really do need the money. But you see, that the point that I need to make on this is that by the time you try and single out those that should get it, they'll then have to have spe up special, up a special scheme mm. to help those pensioners that are just outside the, the, the benefit system on, on pensions. And so then, in the end, they will save very little money, a great deal of cost of um, administration. And what we always decided to do, which I think was quite right, if you paid it to everybody, those that didn't okay. need it, they got it taxed oh, okay. away and from them. Arthur, briefly, if, if you the briefly. The pensioners who want to get the credit have to fill out 243 questions. Yeah. This is not a straightforward thing, particularly for those who are not tech savvy in the first place, the generation who yeah. are technically least tech savvy. That's right. But also, 13,000 is not in anyone's books well off. They deserve that money. They have put into the system all their lives and they should be able to uh, be rewarded for their commitment to our country. But by means testing, often it actually costs more it does. than you save by oh, taking okay, it away very, from yeah. the multi A couple of seconds. I've been given a hard out by producer James, but I just want to ask you very briefly, uh, should the Conservatives apologise for the financial black hole? Um, are they disingenuous to complain about these cuts, yes or no? I, I think the Conservatives made it clear that our finances after Covid were in a terrible state. Politicians However, we're growing <laughs> we are growing faster than the rest of the G7 and actually have a better Are outlook. you willing to say sorry for the terrible black hole that Labour have been growing? Granted and uh, bequeathed. Because I'm not going to. I think we there were there are problems with the economy, but well, I'm not going to accept Labour's position on it because know, they're, they're over-egging the pudding. That's what, what they're doing, Mark. My teenage son calls that, which is sorry but not sorry. <laughs>